My position is that the black woman's disrespect and rebellion against the leadership and the authority of the black man is the direct cause of the breakdown in our black family structure. Now, of course, there are many black people who consider those fighting words because as black women, we have never been subject to the kind of examination uh, that our men have been subject to since we have been here. We have been somewhat protected and shielded from any kind of critiquing about our personal behavior, whereas our men have always been up for examination. Um, the book is not an attack on black women. I have never said that all black women do everything that I list in my book. Uh, none of us have lived long enough to do everything that I list in the book, but uh, most of us do some of the things that I've listed in my book. And I do say that it is not because of generalizations that we are all victimized by some of the negative patterns of behavior in the book, but the book just represents our collective contribution. This is some of everything that we have done or that we do daily that contributes to the breakup of our relationship, the destruction of our man, and the failure of our children to be able to function. They did not tell us that all of that, uh, being my own person and I'm independent, would lead to separation, loneliness, celibacy, and lesbianism. They didn't tell us that if you give up the man, you're gonna take one of these things and it's worse and it will destroy your nation. They didn't give us that information. They made us think that it was some kind of glorified position to brag about the fact that I got my own job, my own credit card, my own car, so I don't need no man. I don't even know how we got that mixed up. Ain't none of that got nothing to do with having being with no man. <laughs> you, know, you know, we, we have some serious relationship problems that uh, nobody has been able to address us on because everybody wants to pretend that this is not going on. You know, over 60% of our women are single, widowed, separated, or divorced. They don't have a man. I just came out of Florida and they got a housing complex that the Urban League built, which is a black organization that is for women and children only. They, don't, they say they don't allow any men in there. I didn't have time to deal with it, but I talked about them real bad. That's the silliest program I've ever heard of. You know the women that have men if they got a bunch of children. They need fathers. They need protection. We hear about the drug problem that we have in our projects across the country. It's one of the major places that we have a drug problem. You know, we talk about the great strength that we have as black women. Well, the uh, welfare department don't rent government apartments to single black men. Those apartments belong to black women who are allowing this to go on in their home. We have not looked at what part of the responsibility do we share. Yes, black men sell a lot of drugs, and a lot of us black women get the money from them drugs and buy some of these fancy clothes we wear, drive around in some of these fancy cars. He is not doing these things alone and without support from us, whether they are good or bad. See, we have a lot of power. We are very strong women. I'm saying that we're using our strength in the wrong direction. We're using it to tear our man down, tear our nation down, instead of building it up. Having an education and a job is not, does not necessarily mean you have a successful life. I keep telling black women that to uh, raise a child, they say, well, I uh, provided with food, clothing, and shelter. That's not raising a child, that's maintaining one. To raise a child, you need a parental coalition of a man and a woman. We have sons who, are, by not having a father in the home, they don't know how to respect women. They take on the uh, black feminine, female emotionism. They're doubtful. They're indecisive. They can't make a decision. They don't know what to do about being a man, because we can't teach them that. We don't have that knowledge. We have daughters who grow up in a home where they don't see any affection, where there's no man there. They go out into the world and try to mate. They don't have no idea how to be no woman to no man how to function in a house with a man, because they haven't seen it. Most of our children, just like us, get all the information we have about how you be with a mate off television. It's the only medium that shows us anybody being together. Those rules have not worked for us. The white woman's liberation movement, we don't have anything to do with that. We have not been under the control of the black man for over 500 years, so what do we have to get liberated from them from? <laughs> they haven't been our boss. That's the white woman and her man. They're going through that, and that's their business. We don't have any business being in that. They only introduced it to break down the civil rights movement. 
Civil rights movement started with the black man, the black woman, and the black child standing together, trying to plead for a freedom, justice, and equality, and more benefits in the country that they had had built. They threw the white woman in there with the women's liberation movement and made it a woman against man thing. That created a big separation between black men and black women because then everybody started going for self. Then they bring the welfare system in and tell us in order to feed and clothe and house our children, we have to give up our man. You have to put the man out of the house. When the white farm wife goes to the government for subsidy for the farm, they don't tell her to get rid of the farm and they keep that family together. But in the black community, they make it a requirement because they want to keep endorsing into the black community that the black man is no good and that he is not deserving of respect, he is not deserving of us letting him give us any protection or instruction and that we are better than them. The major responsibility that the black woman has had on the earth for the over uh, the trillions of years that we have been here has been one of nutrition and birthing children. Those two things have a great deal to do with the survival of any people, the reproduction of the nation and feeding them the proper food so that they can live. Those are very important jobs. Those are very powerful positions because it puts us in a position to decide who's going to live or die and how slow they're going to die by what we feed them. We have a very powerful position. That's, that's not a, a small role that we play. We have just been taught to misrepresent and misuse that power. The, the people who we have been counting on to give us the truth about how to get along uh, have failed. The white people don't know how to get along. They don't have that information themselves. They don't get along with nobody on earth. So they didn't have no information to impart to us about how we're supposed to get along. They changed their relationship rules at will. We have, you know, tons of black children around this country that I hear from who have grown up traumatized by the fact that they were referred to as the outside child. You know, when we were having children like that, they called it illegitimate children until the white woman started having them, and now it's single parenting. See, they changed the rules according to what they're doing. So I've called on our people to change them depending on what we want to do, what our needs are. There's another need that has not been addressed in our community, no, because nobody would deal with it, and that's one that God did not create three sexes. We only have men and women. Now, I have not said that we should reject the sisters who try and act like men and the men who try and act like women. I'm not saying to reject them from among us, but they need to be taught. We don't have to accept that as some kind of normalcy because that's not normal. I'm trying to demonstrate how they have set rules that they have forced us to follow that they don't even follow themselves. They change the rules to suit them when they get ready. We can change them to suit us when we get ready, especially if we have what we have now, which is a failing system. It hasn't worked for us. We don't have to be ashamed that it hasn't worked for us. But we do have to be ashamed of the fact that we keep plodding behind it and not trying to make the corrections that will help our people to survive. He wants to keep us in this condition. He wants to keep us separated from our man. Because he knows that the only door, the only route he has to destroy our black man is through the black woman. And he's going to keep trying to do it. And he's going to keep
represent the missing link as black women. The black uh, man has been dissected, examined, the white man, the white woman, and the black child. But it has been us as black women who have never been examined. We have been protected, we have been insulated, we have been kept from any kind of criticism about our personal behavior in the home and outside of the home, and we have been given the false compliment that we are the backbone of the black nation. There is no doubt in any community in this country that the men in those communities are the backbone of their nations. There is no doubt in the white community that the white man is the backbone of his nation. The European, the Buddhist, the Korean, the Japanese, the Hispanic, all of those men are the backbones of their community and there's no doubt about it. It is only in the black community where those values have been transposed and where they put that burden on us and tell us that we are the backbone of the black community, which is a direct insult to the black man and implies that he don't have no backbone and that his women have to represent him. I remind people all the time that God did not make the white man, the white woman, the black woman, and then the black man. He made the black man first and he created all of the rest of the people after him. In 1985, I was going about the country trying to still work to teach our people something, trying to get them to stop eating pork, and uh, at that time I was having what I call get off those hog lectures. And uh, I would take the microscope out and I would show black people how even if you cook pork you couldn't kill the worm. I would show them that uh, the worm was still alive in the meat after heat because that's what they told us, that you could cook it and kill the worm. And so I would show them what it did to the brain and the spinal column. And so there were many black men who wanted to stop eating pork. They wanted to change their diets, and uh, they were in agreement. But it was the black woman who I found who was the most adamant, who refused to change her cooking habits, who didn't want to shop differently, who didn't want to do any different meal planning. And so I say, well, now, if we are refusing to provide the black man with the proper physical food when we know food is what sustains life, then what else are we keeping from him?